Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. Today we're looking at the intro to Must Be Jelly by William Clark on a G harmonica. Don't go anywhere. So this lesson's a little bit off the cuff. I was planning something entirely different and then I was just listening to some William Clark and thinking, you know what, I want to teach you some William Clark. So this is a nice little intro to the classic song Must Be Jelly. It's on a G harmonica, the song's in the key of D. So we're playing in second position, but if that means nothing to you, don't worry, just follow the tab on the screen. If you enjoyed today's lesson, please click like, share with your friends, and subscribe for free harmonica lessons every single week. I'm sure you noticed in the intro as well, I was using one of these. Technically, I wasn't using it because it's not plugged into anything. The lead is just snaking around on the floor beneath me. But I was holding it, and the reason I was holding it is because he uses it in the original, and he doesn't just play through it to make his sound louder and, and kind of change the sound. He actually uses a hand cup and release like that to get certain sounds. So I want to talk about those as we go. So I might use the microphone as a prop. So you'll, as well as getting the tab today, you're going to get a great uh, lesson in using microphone effectively as well. But let's start by looking at the tab, and there's only three lines to get through, and the first one goes something like this. Okay, my octave, oh, it's horribly out of tune, um, but <laughs> can't be helped right now. So the tab, we've got two draw, and then a three draw, four draw, five blow, and then the three and six blow octave together. So what that means is you're playing three blow and six blow, and your tongue is down the middle to uh, block out the notes in between it so that you get an octave split, two notes an octave apart at the same time. So that's the first half of the line. So... Oh, the octave's killing me, I'm sorry. Um, let me just tell you about the second note there, the three draw. I haven't put in the tab, but there's a little bit of a what I call a scoop. I didn't put in the tab just because sometimes the tab can get really messy once you start putting all these little things in, and sometimes it can be better to just talk these things through rather than put everything in there. But I am adding a little bit of a bend to that note to start with, and then releasing that bend so that you get if I slow it down, like that. Anyway, half, first half of line A, and that octave, we hold it for five beats, which is why I've got four dashes and then a break and then an extra dash. I'm not putting those five together because we've got four beats to a bar, so you can count one, two, three, four, five, or you can go one, two, three, four, one, if you want to count them as kind of uh, separate bars. Anyway, that would be the first half of the line, and then the second half, we've got five draw, four draw, four blow, three draw semitone bend, two draw, and then two draw full step bend, and then two draw again. And it's not too fast, this. It's kind of a slowish sort of swing kind of sound to it. Da 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 da. And that's actually a third of the way through the opening solo. This is a, a kind of a, a 12 bar solo, but it's split into three phrases of, of four bars, if you like. Now, the first set of notes, right up until the octave, uh, everything before the octave is kind of a pickup. So it actually comes in before the band, and it comes in before the, the first bar of the 12 bars. So if you're counting it in, you'd actually go, instead of going one, two, three, four, you go one, two, three, ba-ba-da-ba-ba. -ba -ba. So I'll just try that now. 
One, two, three. Sorry, that octave is just sending me mad. I'm gonna have to uh, have a fiddle with this or get someone to fiddle with it for me um, because that's killing me. I'm sorry if that's killing you too. If you get that sound, by the way, where well, you can kind of hear it waving, wavering, that is an octave, or, or you, are, you are doing the right technique to get an octave, it's just your harmonica is out of tune. Sometimes you can send an octave out of tune by blowing too hard, but I can tell, I mean this is an old harmonica, I've played it a lot, I can just tell I'm playing it very softly, and it's just out of tune, it just happens. Anyway, let's get on to phrase B, which goes something like this. Or, I should say it goes... Because we're going to start using the microphone, or talking about how to use the microphone in a minute. So the tab, we've got a four-draw bend and then it releases to a four draw natural note. That is held for seven beats. So it held for a bar and then another three beats after that. We're gonna talk about what we're gonna do with our hand during those beats in a minute. But first off, you just wanna get. And you can count that, you can go, oh, what, what am I doing with this? Where's this going? That'll do. <laughs> So if I count myself in, and we can count in on four this time. One, two, three, four. And then, four draw bend, three draw, two draw, and then two draw twice again. Those four, three, two are a triplet. Da, da, da. One, two, three. And then, just two draw twice. Now, without the microphone and the kind of wah thing going on, the tab will, will serve you perfectly for that. But there's something extra we want to add, and he's, he's doing uh, something that's really useful for just changing the tone. <coughs> Excuse me. So he's holding the microphone and holding the uh, harmonica together. And uh, I'm not sure what William Clark's grip was like, but this is my grip. This is kind of how I hold it. I sort of have the harmonica between the fingers like that and kind of grip around it. I'm trying to grip securely so that if I was playing through a, uh, an amplifier, most of the sound or all of the sound ideally goes through the microphone, through the cable, through the amplifier and comes out rather than it seeping between my fingers, coming out here. So really, if I got it really tight, you wouldn't really hear me playing in, in this context where I'm not plugged in because everything would be trapped and it would be airtight and you wouldn't be able to play. Um, but generally, we're trying to get more of a... than a... where it's clearly too loose and it's not going to go through the microphone. Anyway, with this we've got, so I've said you're playing the four draw for seven beats. On the sixth beat, if you like, so the penultimate beat, uh, I'm pretty sure that's where he does it on the recording. He does a little, kind of, just takes his hand off for that beat. So what you get is you get the normal sound previously, if you like, the cupped sound. Then you get a release where the tone changes and then it goes back. So, so you get this nice change. Sort of a wah sound, but the tone changes as well as just hearing that wah. Now, I'm not plugged in, I don't have my amp ready here, so you're not going to hear how it sounds through the mic, but listen to the recording and hear how that is. And, and you can practice without the amp plugged in because it's, it's about the shape. It's, it, you know, you don't kind of need the amp in order to practice this. Um, the other thing to say is you don't have to do it on the beat he does it. I've marked it as red in the tab, that, that little dash, so, so that's where I think he's doing it in the recording. But if you were to do it on a different beat that isn't musically wrong, I suppose it's not in keeping historically with what he did on the recording, but he probably played it different every time he played it anyway. Um, so this is something you can practice. If you're holding a note, you can do 
you can do kind of on and off and practice getting those different sounds. Anyway, that's his, what he's doing on line B. Line C goes something like this. It's actually very similar to line B, but it is slightly different, so we will talk about it. Okay, so he's holding the uh, four draw bend and releasing it to a four draw, holding that for seven beats again. He's doing his, his wahs in a different place. So he actually does it on for beat four and then beat six of, of that seven beat holding of that note. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll go again. One, two, three, four. And then the rundown, he's doing the same set of notes almost. He's doing a four draw bend, three draw, two draw, and he plays a two draw once more. But he's not doing a da 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 da. He's not doing a triplet. Da 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 da. He just goes da 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 da. So line B. Line C. B. C. B. C. Hopefully you can hear the difference. Da 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 da. And it's a nice example of repetition with slight variation. Really, really crucial for. Um, making your playing interesting, changing things, but keeping certain things the same. If you practice those lines, in addition to the microphone technique of that kind of wah, then you'll combine those and hopefully get something like William Clark's solo. There is more to the song, by the way. I think there's a solo later on, and I'm pretty sure it's a third position solo, so we'd actually be picking up a C harmonica to play that. So if you listen further on and you think, what's going on there? then I think that's what that's going to come down to. But I just really wanted to teach this today. I was just really feeling the love for William Clark, really, really great player, and wanted to give you something of his to have a little look at. I hope you enjoy practicing this. Please send me your comments, your questions, your queries. And before you go, click like and uh, share with your friends and also subscribe for free harmonica lessons every single week. I'll be back with something new next week. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to teach yet, but I take requests, so please put those in the comments beneath. You can email contact at learntheharmonica.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, come and join our communities on there to talk more harmonica stuff. Until then, I'll see you again soon and enjoy your practice. Cheers.